This is part one of a series of videos on how to configure forms-based authentication out of the box in SharePoint 2013. In part one of this series, we're going to create our new web app, configure the settings, use the default sign-in page after enabling FBA, and then take a look to see how that changes the look and feel of our site. So I'm in Central Admin now. I'm going to go to Manage Web Applications. And as you can see, I have two here, so let's create a new one. So click on New. And we're going to create a new IIS website. And for this, I'm just going to call it FBA. I'm just going to use port 80 and just use a host header of FBA as well. For the path, we'll leave that at the default. Uh, we do not need to allow anonymous, and we're not going to use SSL for the purpose of the video. OK, so we have an Windows enabled by default. We're just going to use NTLM. So now we're going to enable FBA. And one important thing to keep in mind about SharePoint 2013 is that all web apps are created with a claims-based authentication by default. Uh, you know, in 2010, you could create a, a Windows or a claims web app. Now everything defaults to claims. So you can only enable Windows if you, if you want it to behave that way. Uh, but the classic or the Windows authentication mode um, is no longer available in the GUI itself. You can assign it or, or create one using uh, some PowerShell commands. Uh, but again, the, Microsoft has made the move to move everything towards claims moving forward. So I'm going to put a check mark by enable forms based authentication. So now I have to give my membership provider a name as well as my role manager. Uh, so for this, I'm just going to say FBA and FBA role. These can be anything that you want them to be, and we'll see how these come into play when we start editing some of the web config files in part three of this series. Let's scroll down a little bit. As I said, we will just use the default sign-in page. And there's our URL. In the application pool area, I actually have created a service account just for app pools, so I'm going to choose that. We're going to tell it to go ahead and create a new application pool in IIS. Database server, this is on the same box as I'm on now. So I'm just going to replace all this with FBA. And we'll just accept the defaults the rest of the way. I will say yes to enable the customer experience improvement program. Uh, I always encourage our customers to check this box because Microsoft has proven over the past that they really do use the information they gather to uh, you know, greatly improve security and performance, uh, especially within SharePoint. Click OK. And we're almost done. OK, so application has been created. And now we're going to go ahead and create a site collection so we can have some content in our site. So we'll click that. And now we get the Create Site Collection screen. So again, I'm just going to type in some quick stuff here. Home. We won't put a description. We'll leave the URL the same. We we'll use the 2013 experience version, and we'll just do a team site. And we'll scroll down, and I'm just going to choose a primary site collection admin for right now. Check that name. We're not going to use quotas, so we're just going to click OK. We see the waiting screen again. OK. And now we see the message that the top-level site has been successfully created. So let's open the site up. OK, and now we can see we have the new sign-in page after we've enabled FBA. And what this page actually requires you to do is drop down, use the drop-down menu to select Windows or Forms authentication for your users. So we don't have any forms-based accounts yet. We're going to cover that in the, uh, in the last video of this series. So I'll choose Windows authentication here. So as you can see, we're actually logged in now, and now SharePoint 2013 is going through the normal process of uh, creating all the content on the site the first time that we access it. OK, so now we finally get to our home screen. We see the site's been created. It's up and running. And we see that we're logged in up here as, the, as administrator. Well, that concludes part one of the series. In the next part, we'll actually create the SQL database that we're going to store our forms-based users in and assign the proper permissions to it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you then.